Hey, True Believers, Zenglantine Teen here, and yes, it's the holiday special. 2017 came out for DC Comics. They did one last year as well. These things are pretty interesting. Uh, just like the Halloween, just like the new talent showcase, I figured I would go over each story, story by story. You know, because these anthology books are always a mixed bag. Some stories are going to be stronger than others, and in this case... There are a couple of really good ones, but there's a whole bunch of ones that are just there. As a matter of fact, right out of the gate, we have The Reminder, which stars Bebo, John Constantine, and Clark Kent. And John Constantine, of course, is being his usual cryptic self. And Bebo says, hey, don't worry, Superman can do anything. Clark Kent said, well, he can't do everything. And Bebo sets him straight. This is just the setup. And he says, well, I heard some stories and here they are. The first story told is Twas the Night Before Christmas starring Batman. An old lady and a young boy are out in the snow. They're traveling. They try to seek shelter. They're turned away. The grandmother dies. And her ghost tells the little boy that she will never leave him. Cut to the modern day. We see Batman and Alfred riding in the bat mobile tank it looks like a combination of the every batmobile ever made for any show or tv movie or car, cartoon it really is just a weird batmobile anyway i love the shot of him going into the snow that's awesome uh this is the problem he's going to this house where we see the grandmother now with the kid all grown up and he's got hostages apparently these are people to turn him away and grandma wants revenge now we don't get to know the guy as an adult so we have no idea if this is a redemption story is he really feeling bad about what he's got to do obviously that's what they want you to feel but did the grandmother push him to be a bad guy up until this moment we have no idea therefore we're not able to actually feel what the story is trying to convey green arrow and black canary star in you Better Think Twice, written by Margaret Scott and drawn by Phil Hester. Take away the Santa suits and this story can be told at any time. This is not a Christmas story. This is a Black Canary, Green Arrow story that's told with them beginning the story off. I'm saying the word story a lot in Santa suits. Black Canary is very cynical towards the holiday. She's surprised that Green Arrow isn't because he's all like, Hey, Santa is a corporate shill trying to make money for the man, even though I was the man. All of a sudden, bad guys hit the orphanage. Green Arrow and Black Canary hit them. Cut, print, check the gate, move on. Next up, we have Sergeant Rock in Going Down in easy and it's written by tom king and drawn by francesco francavilla and it is good <laughs> i'm I, oh my gosh actually this is probably going to be in whatever collected tom king's works it's a very simple story even though we don't really understand the motivations of the easy company soldier he's got himself a, a nazi officer prisoner he's shot and he's dying but he's just determined to keep the Nazi officer prisoner until Easy Company arrives to take him off his hands, even though he knows he's going to die soon. It is a deep story, but I would have liked to have known the soldier's end game. Like, why, why would he not just shoot this officer? A minor nit to pick, and after he's done with Mr. Miracle, I want to see a Sergeant Rock comic book written by Tom King. Now we have Flash Hope for the Holidays, written by Spirit Award nominee Joshua Williams and drawn by Neil Googe. This is a bit of a twist on the superhero finds out the presents aren't able to be delivered, so he delivers them trope. In this case, Flash stops the Rainbow Raider. He's supposed to be home with Wally West celebrating Christmas. But he finds out that these people aren't going to be able to make it home for the holidays. So he picks each one of them up and runs them to their destination. Like I said, it's a bit of a twist. Thoroughly enjoyable, utterly entertaining, and definitely one of the better stories in the book. Part of the problem of the stories in this book are that they don't really capture the spirit of Christmas. They're just taking place during Christmas. Well, this one does it. It captures the spirit. Good job on you. 
And speaking of a crap story that doesn't capture the spirit of Christmas, it just seems to be taking place during it, we have the Deathstroke story. And it's called A Wilson Family Christmas. And boy, is it just bad. This is the I'll Be Home for Christmas. Uh, it's written by Priest. It's drawn by Tom Grummetti, or Tom Grummet, excuse me. And it's just, it's mean. There's nothing good about it, really. It's just an ill-spirited Christmas story. Like I said, it's the I'll Be Home for Christmas of it. It's the, uh, what was that one with Robin Williams and Joel McHale? It was just really mean-spirited. It's not even mean-spirited in a bad Santa way where it's kind of funny. And yet you still, and even in that, you see some redemption from bad Santa or from, you know, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, this one just sucks. Driver's Seat, written by Max Landis and drawn by Francis Manipal. Basically, you got Lois Lane getting into an accident and in one part of town, Superman stopping a robbery. Some guy's like, oh my gosh, I needed the money and I, I made the jetpack so nobody would get hurt. But somebody got hurt, Lois did. And so we find out she is not actually hurt, but her car got totaled. And she's really sad about that. So Clark Kent does something Clark Kentish and very romantic and very nice. And it would have been really good, except for the story just feels, feels so pointless and so lost. It just doesn't really hit. I mean, I know what they're going for, and it's done better in the Superman comics. But they're really kind of going for this good romantic feeling before Lo be between Lois and Clark. Like I said, done better elsewhere, not bad here, just kind of flatlines. This is the story that this crowd would have the most trouble with, and that's mainly because it's the one that has the politics. Now, it's done right, mind you. It's one of those where they just lay out a scenario, and it's up to you whether you want to read into it and get affected or not. Dan Didio's the writer. Matthew Clark is on pencils. It's called Silent Night, starring the Atomic Knights. And we start off when we have a leader of a town that wants to make sure that all the outsiders are killed because they are outsiders and only outsiders. And there has never been anything done to the people inside by the outsiders. So, obviously, the leader is incredibly bigoted and has to go. Once again, very subtle. But, yeah, and other than that, it really is just a past story. It's nothing good. If it was at least good, it would be worth it. Granted, once again, only those of us looking for it are going to find it. But, yeah, there you go. I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. So, this story starring the Teen Titans, written by Shea Fontana, drawn by Otto Schmidt, doesn't say that it's Starfire's first Christmas, but it writes her that way. It actually says December 24th. Now, if it said December 24th, 1990, 2000, whatever, put it in the past, okay, I could understand this. But this story is telling us that Starfire has only been on this planet for less than a year. Now, I don't know. Maybe she's been rewritten again that that's as long as she's been. But this is, this is Baby's first Christmas right here. And she confronts the ghost of Christmas past that makes people sad. But since she doesn't have a Christmas and never had a Christmas before, there's nothing for her to tap into. Even though the ghost is tapping into bad memories that weren't necessarily on Christmas. So it doesn't make sense. Sorry, guys. This one's a mess. Swamp Thing in The Echo of the Abyss. Written by Scott Brian Wilson and drawn by Nick Klein. This is also one of the good ones. This is in the top three, at the very least. And uh, it's the reason why is it is a story of hope in a hopeless situation. As we see a whole bunch of people on a space station, they hear that the world below them is being destroyed. And they're wondering, well, what are we going to do? We're stuck up here. And the Swamp Thing shows up to save them which I thought was kind of cool because, you know, he does so by like a little sprig of holly. It's really interesting. It's a good story. 
and definitely makes good use of the eight pages it is allotted. God bless Spirit Award nominee and winner Bill Casevoli for drawing a good story underneath Greg Rucka's nonsensical writing in the story Solstice. This one stars Wonder Woman and Batman, and it's one of those things where it's like it's got uh, it's got narrative squares all over the place and it's supposed to be deep and philosophical and we're supposed to get the contradictions between the way Wonder Woman looks at light and darkness and Batman looks at light and darkness and the way they work except it doesn't work it really does sound like a high school student trying to explain life to you because they feel they've been through a lot you know, it, it it tries, gotta give it that much, but unfortunately fails miserably. And so Bebo wraps things up and says, well, there you go. See, there's hope in every situation. It's a good world, blah, 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 yada, yada. Clark Kent walks out and sees John Constantine who tells him, I know who you are. You think those glasses fool me? And they talk and Kent says, well, why don't you come on over to my house for dinner where we see John Constantine, John Kent is asking him all sorts of questions. Lois stops him from smoking. It's a good moment. It ends. This wraparound ends better than it began, even though it really makes you wonder, how did Bebo hear all of those stories? I would like to know that. Maybe there needs to be a Bebo story to explain how he heard the stories. Other than that, there you go. That's the wraparound. In the end... The Holiday Special 2017 has three good stories in it, a whole bunch of bleh stories, take them, leave them, and a couple of bad ones. I could not recommend this as a book for you to buy for the holidays. Sorry, guys, I wish I had better news. But what's your opinion? Did you like it? Did you hate it or like me? Did you think, eh, it's all right. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, you want to see more, click like, share, of course, because that gets word about the channel. And if you haven't done it already, hit subscribe and that notification bell. Now, if you have subscribed already, make sure to hit that notification bell again because YouTube's turned off a whole bunch of notifications on people. I'd like to uh, also say this is the way we make our living. So if you don't mind, head on over to Patreon. Drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on and help us keep making videos for you. would like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching. And Merry Christmas. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters